You legends have asked for it, so we have delivered. This is What's in the Bag, and today we are going What's in the Bag with Naden Anua. What's up, my guy? How are you, my friend? Yeah, good, pal. Yourself? All good, my friend. All good, my friend. Right, I'm new to this. Uh, the ladies and gentlemen really want to see what's in the bag. Mm -hmm. So what is in the bag? We're going to start with your putter. What putter are you rocking so and why? This is a Nike method and this is when I was sponsored by Nike and it, I had a pick of um, putters and I came out with this one. I like this type of shape. Right. It's got the weights in the back so you know when I miss I can say it's because the weights aren't in the right spot. You're going to see a few consistent themes within this. You might see some tags on the clubs right. and I do it just to stress people out. Right. Okay, Because yeah. for me that stuff doesn't matter. Yeah. But yeah, this is a black night method matters apparently and it's a thing of beauty. Has been known to make a putt or two, usually when it doesn't matter. Wedges, what wedges are you rocking? Um, I'm rocking these tailor-made creatures. So as with you, this is my first what's in the bag and I apologise for the state of these. <laughs> um, and again, the tags are on to trigger people. Um, but yeah, these, I went for a 50, 54, 58. I think right. most people go for a 52, 56, 60. But I went a bit more distance after the pitching wedge. So I went for the 50. Right. Uh, so I strengthened the loss essentially. And then as far as the 58, that's my, um, that's my lob wedge. And the 54 is good from bunkers as well. So this is the three that I went for. Right. And it means that obviously I'm not as strong in the uh, top end of the bag, but is what it is. Fair enough. And the irons, which look absolutely sensational. Yeah, these are nice. So these are the P770s by TaylorMade. I got these um, in December and then put them away in January for three months. <laughs> right. So yeah, these no, these these are nice. I think they're one degree stronger than a traditional lofted set of irons. So like a, if instead of a 7 iron being 34 degrees, these are like 33. Right. And they're similar to a set which I was last using, which were um, some Callaway Apexes. So they're not power bats, right. but they're not like a pure ball striker's iron either. But they do, it comes off the face real nice. And yeah, it's quite, you can get quite low flight from them. So I enjoy this. Right, and when you go and get your clubs, yep. how many do you try before you purchase? Are it's you a, proper I'm, like? Mm. I think the way that I am as a person, I know that there are margins which can be gained by choosing the exact right set of clubs. But mm. for me, if I just if I look at them and they're not disruptive, then I tend to go for them. So I prefer I like sets which which suit my eye. Right. And as far as lofts and stuff goes, the performance is the same. Then I'll just choose one over the other. The sort of finer details of stuff. I think once I get to a really good level, yeah. it'll matter more. But for now, I'm not there. So as long as as long as I think it looks nice, then it means that when I go to hit it, I enjoy it. Fair enough, I like that. And that's I, I awesome, like so that's, through, that's from pitching wedge through to four iron. Sweet, yes. right. And then we have got, what are these here? So I've got two driving irons essentially. Wow, um, I was gonna say, cause there's no hybrid, there's no three No, no with. hybrid, no. So I'm more of an irons guy. I think with hybrids, I tend to take them quite uh, left. So these are the Callaway Forge UTs. And yeah. this is an 18 and 21, which is a three iron and a two iron. Right. So I, as far as, I'm not really a golf player, but I do like a long iron to the point where in the past I had a one iron and I used to love hitting that off the tee. A one iron? A one iron, yeah, which you is know like... What? I bought a one iron once, used it about three times and just loved it. <laughs> no, I used it. Absolutely sent it. I used What's it all the joke? time. I used it all really? the time. Yeah, because like I've got speed in my swing right? and I can compress the ball and get it quite low. And I enjoy seeing the flight of these long irons more so than with hybrids because I don't need, to, like I can get it higher as well. And I think with a hybrid, it can be for people who struggle to get it higher. So I wouldn't necessarily need that for that. I think I can get better distances with a hybrid, but as far as gappings go, this this 21 has a three iron, this is a two iron. The two iron can go out to 250, 260. I was gonna say, is that, yeah. cause you can hit that, that about two? I can, that, so it'll, it'll carry 240, yeah. and it can roll out to 250, 260. So with that then, that's essentially, like I could I could get rid of the two and go for yeah. three wood, right. but then the gap from the three iron to the three wood, because the three wood can carry 260. Ah. You see? So there's, right. lo there's logic to this. There is. There's logic to this, yeah. Well, I, do you know what? Because I absolutely love golf. Like, yeah. I love playing it, but I don't know much about these sort of things. I didn't know there was driving iron. Yeah. like I, do, do, uh, do the pros have that? Yeah, it's some pros do. Some people like hybrids, some people like five woods, seven woods, yeah. nine woods. But just for me, I, I prefer hitting irons to hitting ones. And I right. think, even though I can do, I could in theory do both, I just, as I said, I just prefer hitting irons and over those sorts of distances and the golf courses we play, 
it's very rare you're sort of hitting into a green from like 250, 260. So it'd be something which I use more off the tee yeah. as opposed to in the fairway. If it was something to be landing on greens, if you're playing off the way backs and it's like 7,000 yards, then yeah. yes, hybrid, yes, three wood. But for that, for what we play, irons are fine. All right, let us know at home if you have driving irons as well, because that's the first time I've ever seen a driving iron. And right here we go, the big dog. Yeah, so this and is. This man can absolutely smash it. Been known to, been known to. Here Just for go. evidence, there are some there's some ball marks in there. That there's some is. ball marks in there. But what title has got right for this TSI too is the fact that they've got this in a different colour, so you can't see those miss hits there, <laughs> right. can you? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, this is uh, I got That's this a again. Bit of kit, isn't it? Yeah, I got this again in December, and I'd heard good things about the TSI, so I went to try it out, and this two went went for miles basically. It doesn't yeah. really spin too much because I can overspin things a little bit and it just looks the profile of it I thought looked nice and I do like all black stuff as you can see by my gear yeah, so yeah. to suit mine I thought well let's just get a hold of that and just try and hit it as hard as possible and what are you what are you aiming to hit that what's you now how far are you driving um because I've seen you today and you, you, you do, do you want to are you talking at best or on average at best best the furthest I've carried one which was on a track man was 310. wow yeah that was like try and obliterate your spine in doing so, but it, <laughs> yeah. but it was but it was 310. But on average, it's probably going anywhere from say 280 to 300. That's still not too shabby, is it? It's it's more than enough. It's yeah. more than enough. Yeah. I think my furthest is like 250, 260. No, no, no. There's, there'll be more. But the thing yeah. is, you don't really measure it. That's the thing about golf, isn't That's it? That's true. But then also playing out on the course is completely different to being on a track man anyway, isn't it? So this is very true. Yeah. What is your favourite club in the bag? Um, my favourite club is probably going to be my two iron, this 18 degree here. Yeah. Just because as far as things go off the tee, with most of the courses that we play, like for me, the driver potentially goes too far. So I tend to gravitate towards that two iron a lot. Right. And if you can hit it anywhere from like 240 to 260, I feel like you don't lose out on anything. And I do just like the look of it. And when you catch one, Oh, mamma mia. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, yeah. <laughs> and which club doesn't really get an outing because you go, I don't really fancy that. Do you know what? I don't use Lob Wedge a lot. No. The 58 is irrelevant. If anything, I would probably take that out and maybe put in a hybrid or a, or a three wood. I think that's what I might do. But the 58 itself, I don't I don't use it a lot. I, tend, I use the 54. I tend to use the 54 from Bunkers. Right. Um, just open up a little bit and just 54, 50 around the greens as well. So the 58. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it serves a purpose, but yeah, I think that's probably what I get out. Fair enough. Right, we've done the clubs. Yeah. Snacks. Snacks. It's important. 18 holes of golf, a lot of walking, a lot of brain power. What snacks are you taking around the golf course? I think it depends. It depends. Like, I don't I, I don't take things too seriously. So if I'm playing with my friends or whatever, I've just be eating just loads of chocolates and things like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Stuff that's just clearly not good for you. Because I'm out for a good time, you know. <laughs> and I have the, and I have the chocolates, people have their beers, all that stuff. But then, you know, the, I think the beauty of like being at the right club is the halfway hut. You know yes. what I mean? If you make it there, get yourself a little cheeky sandwich or something like that. Sausage what's, roll. Your, what's your halfway hut order <sighs> of dreams? Of dreams? Yes. I guess it depends where I am. Um, Really yeah, nice golf course. I need, uh, so I was lucky to have been a member at the Wisley and some of the like food they make there was exceptional to the point where you just don't really want to go back out again. <laughs> um, but you know, I'll be honest, I'm not, I'm not a massive foodie, but when I'm hungry, like if it looks like it's going to take days off my life, then yeah, I'll be going for that head first. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the key for me, yeah. Fair enough. So that was made of manure. What's in the bag? And I, do you know what? I really enjoyed that. Sorry, there's one more thing. Can I just show you? Oh, here we go. So I didn't even realize this was a thing until oh, I had go. a look today. And I went into this bag here, this pocket, which should have loads of balls in. Right. And... Oh! <laughs> I was like, hold on a sec. Here we go. It's like every, every, glove, every glove in the Northwest something <laughs> happened to be in my bag. And I got another one there. Jesus. And there's no magic in any single one of them. I think these are my, these that's may be winter ones, but after like, that, I, like a driving glove. I bought a new glove like a month ago, thinking that I needed one. Well, there we go. And then, yeah, here we are. Thank God we did for what's in the bag then. So you're sorted for the next four years. Well, allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know 
if you enjoyed it, if you want more of this stuff, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Not because of me, because of Nathan. Yeah, let, let us know. know. Comments down below. Don't What's forget to ring the bell. That bell. And subscribe so yeah. you don't miss out. Big Ange, I'm doing better, aren't I? See you later. <laughs> <laughs>